A few days ago, I posted a proof of concept Desmos graph where you could play a short Geometry Dash level. After getting a lot of positive feedback, I decided to make a follow-up project where I would use my own assets and creativity to make a game. I would build up suspense, but that takes effort, so here it is. I've named it Rocket Dash because it's almost a Geometry Dash clone, but with slightly different mechanics and graphics. The main idea of this video isn't to be a showcase of my game, but rather a summary of how I made it in hopes maybe you can make something better. First step was graphics. Instead of using expressions to make a game, I decided to use images to reduce lag and make it look better. First I introduced four different layers of parallax for my background and made them move based on a variable. To make sure the background couldn't go off screen, I used modulus expressions and lists to create multiple instances of the image and have each one loop back. For character images, I decided to handle the character and rocket separately, but have them both inherit the same position and rotation. The character has three states of enthusiasm, based on the current speed he's going, and the rocket has an active and inactive state. You can probably guess what those are based off of. This looks pretty good, but it could look better, so I decided to add a screen shake. To do this, I made a variable to store the camera as a point, and positioned my existing assets relative to that point. I then defined the camera, including a shake point, which was just based off a slider as the seed of a pseudo-random number. I also decided to scale the shake quadratically based off your current speed to make it feel like you were actually moving. I also applied the shake twice to the rocket for some extra effect. Next, instead of implementing the core gameplay loop, I made a cool speedometer. Now that we have that out of the way, time to make the character actually move up and down. We can create a variable that controls the y of our character and increment it based off of a variable for our velocity which is based off our speed. Normally you wouldn't be able to create autonomous variables in Desmos, but by setting a regression then using the regression term to define the limits of our variable, we can squeeze our way out of that restriction. Now that we have movement, all we need are obstacles in a collision system. We can stack our tiles and use pseudo-random numbers and modular expressions to generate points that our obstacles should be located at. For collisions, we can get all towers at a similar x to our character and make sure our character's y is within the gap of our towers. Finally, we can set up a similar regression system to control our position, that way we can regress back to the start of our course if we collide with any object. Now we have our finished product. Far from flawless, but done. Unfortunately, like every project that abuses regressions to create autonomous variables, we have to deal with regression oscillation, which is what happens when suddenly the screen starts shaking between two different positions. A lot of what I'm about to get into is merely speculation as no one's yet to confirm what code actually causes this. But, my guess after playing around with it for a few days is that in Desmos, variables can update on a frame-by-frame -frame basis at any time between those frames. Regressions update similarly, but somehow regressions update based on their state two frames ago. Normally this wouldn't be a problem because autonomous variables weren't intended in Desmos, but this can become a problem if your regression enters a split state. What this means is that since each regression updates based on a two-frame delay, we can separate our single regression into two regressions that update at alternating times. Since variables can be updated on any frame and are not bound to one timescale over the other, the rate at which these regressions update is almost uncontrollably random, and getting regressions to not behave this way would require frame-perfect input. Once one of the inputs vary enough from each state, chaos theory takes over and the sensitivity to initial conditions pushes each state into a completely different result, allowing you to almost run two versions of the game at once. Unfortunately, there's not yet a way to detect or stop this, and due to the nature of this, I doubt there ever will be. So keep that in mind while playing. Anyways, thanks for watching. I'll be sure to put a link to the graph in the description if you want to play.